your God power. Get everything you ever wanted and live the life of your dreams. The Master's Course. Copyright 2010 by Richard Lee McKim Jr. All rights reserved. Let the quest for knowing begin. Okay, this is our last quiz in this book. So, as a result, I want to go over a couple more things before we leave this uh, section. I want to test you on your understanding of reality. Okay, now, I'm going to name, I'm going to make this real easy for you. I'm going to name situations, I'm going to describe some situations. And I'm going to give you the three answers. There's three possible answers. Okay, I'm going to describe a situation or an event. And I want you to say whether A, it's a good event, it's a good situation, B, it's a neutral situation, or C, it's a bad situation. Now, I'm going to give you a hint. Always go for the good first. Always jump to it's a good situation first. Always. If you can't go to good, then at least say neutral. But don't allow yourself to say bad. Because there is no situation that is bad or good. It is always neutral, but then it becomes whatever you say it is. So try to say it's good. If you can't if you can't do it, then at least say it's neutral. At least give it that. Okay? Are you ready? Okay, I'm gonna start out with a couple easy ones first. You win the lottery. Well, that's easy. <laughs> that's a good situation. Anybody and everybody can jump on that and say that's a great situation. But you know that there's a lot of people that have won the lottery, and these people that won the lottery end up getting killed. For the money. So you see, it turned out to be a bad situation. Was it because it was bad? No. It was because they said, oh, you know, winning all that money is problems. I mean, I don't know how many people I've seen uh, interviewed about the problems of winning all that money. Okay. So because they said in their own words, their own meaning that it's a bad situation or a problem, guess what? It becomes a problem. Guess what? They elicit bad results. Okay, so always go for the good meaning, but if you can't go for the good meaning, go for the neutral meaning. Okay, people are shooting bullets at you. Okay, now I know you want to say that's a bad situation, and you probably are having a hard time saying that that's a good situation, but at least say it's a neutral situation, because you see, those commissards, they were on their religious those religious fanatics, they were really into it. They loved the fact that they were being shot at. They loved showing how the bullets flattened against their chest because they were they you could not they could not be harmed. They could not be harmed. But this is the thing. If somebody was shooting at them and they thought for a moment that it was a bad situation, they would have been killed. So they at least thought it was neutral, but for them, they probably thought it was great. So you see, every situation can be anything depending on what you elicit from it. Now, can you imagine if somebody is shooting at you and you immediately jump to, this is a bad situation? Do you see what would happen? You're going to elicit the bad results from the situation. But if you can at least never go below neutral, always say, at least say, okay, this is neutral. Now, what could come of it? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to follow that one too far. But I will say that start out neutral. Because the minute you immediately jump in and say, oh, this is bad, then guess what you're going to get? It's going to be bad. It can't be otherwise. 
So never go below neutral. Always at least say it's neutral. Okay. You lost your house in foreclosure. Good, bad, or neutral? Well, I think you're beginning to get it. That if you can't say it's good, then at least say it's neutral. But there's been many, many people who have lost their house due to foreclosure, ended up moving somewhere else, meeting the love of their life, or ending up getting a better job because they really buckled down, or all kinds of wonderful things happen to them, and they look back and say, wow, if that hadn't happened, all this great stuff wouldn't have happened. That was a turning point in my life, and thank God it happened. Now, there are plenty of other people who whine and moan, piss and moan about how they lost their house or whatever, and guess what? What meaning are they giving it? They're giving it a negative meaning, aren't they? So what happened? Oh, they're probably in some kind of rental somewhere and lost their job or lost their spouse or whatever. Why? Because they jumped right in and gave it a bad meaning. Do you see how interesting this is? What if you're standing in the middle of a roaring fire? Bad meaning or good meaning? Or neutral? Okay, so it's at least neutral, right? Because you don't know. That guy, that commissar guy, was so powerful in his beliefs that he had a fire set on purpose, a pyre, which is a, a pile of lumber. And he stood in the middle of it, had it set on fire, because you see, these people, they were trying to throw them out of the country. He wanted to show them that there was no hope for them to do that. That there was nothing that they could do. And so he, in order to prove it, I mean to really prove it, in front of 600 people, he got this fire going, stood in the middle of it, was delivering a speech about how invincible they were, and he stood there and ranted on about it until the fire finally completely burned down. He stepped out didn't have a bit of his clothing burnt, didn't even have a hair on his head burnt, in front of 600 witnesses. Why didn't you hear about it? Is it in your reality? No? No, that's why you didn't hear about it. Do you believe in it? If you didn't believe in it, that's why you didn't hear about it. Your reality maintains itself. But was it a good situation? Yeah, it was a great situation. It was such a great situation that he did it on purpose to prove a point. What if... While he was in that fire, he suddenly thought, uh-oh, this is a bad situation. What would have happened? He would have got burned, probably killed. But he didn't give it a bad situation. He didn't give it a bad meaning. He gave it a great meaning, and so it was. So you see, I don't care what kind of a situation you have. It is always at least neutral. Frankly, it's always good. I don't care what it is. It's always got a way that it can turn out fantastic for you. But sometimes, if you haven't had enough practice, it might be hard to just jump right to the good. It might be hard to say, oh, I just lost my house. This is great. Eh, that might be hard. It might be. But if you can, by all means, do it. Jump right in and say, this is fantastic. What opportunities does this mean now? And you will see them. But at least, always know, at least that the situation is neutral. You could win a million dollars in the lottery and be killed, or you could win a million dollars in the lottery and be extremely happy. Just can go any kind of way. You can lose your house and have it be the greatest thing that ever happened in your life, or you can lose your house and have it be the worst thing that ever happened to you. Any situation could go any way, depending on the meaning you give it. Colonel Saunders, I think I remember a story with him that he had his chicken cooking, um, he had his little restaurant, and he was doing good. It was a single little restaurant, if I recall the story correctly. But what happened was, it was an interstate coming through, and they were going to tear down his restaurant, and he was going to be without a restaurant. And so he was forced to do something different. So he went around selling his, his uh, recipe, and he didn't give up. He believed in it. And next thing you know, look what happened. That happened because of adversity. He could have said, oh, I'm defeated. I, I, I don't have the money to build another building now. And so I, that's it. It's over. But he didn't give it that. He gave it a good meaning. He said, hey, there's still something good here. 
I still got a good recipe. And he made something of it. Okay. To continue, go to How to Use Your God Power, Chapter Number 13, Segment Number 9. Let your quest for knowing continue.